Hi there, I'm Richard Black. I'm a counselor here in Christchurch and I head up the organisations Mind Health and Strength to Strength Counselling. Today I want to talk with you about managing anxiety in uncertain times. And we are most certainly surrounded by uncertainty. As such, anxiety and fear are understandable responses. So I want to teach you a little bit about why they are there, how we can use them, and how we can dial them down when needed. I want to take you through what I refer to as the four P's of reducing anxiety. Now, in fact, there is so much I could share with you about how to manage and reduce anxiety, and maybe we will touch on those other points later on. But for now, I want to give you this framework so that you've got something to use that is hopefully going to be of help to you. Now, I'm going to run through each point in turn, and I'm going to load them up with some helpful insights. So please take your time in processing them, in digesting them. Pause this recording to consider and think about what you are hearing. And also perhaps go back over this just so that you juice this for all it's worth and get the most out of it. And then use whatever seems useful to you. So with these four P's, the first P is prepare. Now, one of the interesting things to understand about our brain is that at any point when our brain registers anything it believes is danger, whether that danger be real, whether we are exaggerating that danger, or whether that danger is purely in our imaginations, then our mind goes to the worst case scenario. It takes us to the worst case scenario because it wants to check that we would be prepared if the worst case happened. It's trying to look after us. It wants us to be safe. Now, we can experience that with certain scenarios and images that can be quite vivid in our mind. At other times, we don't experience any images or vivid sense. All we experience is the feeling. The feeling of dread, the feeling of fear, the feeling of anxiety. Now, if that latter part is the case for you, in order to use it, in order for us to be able to prepare for this worst case scenario, we first of all got to allow the feeling to speak. We've got to give it some air time. So I'll often say to clients, if that fear could talk, if that anxiety could speak, what would it say? is so bad? What would it say that it's scared of, fearful of, worried about? Because we want to hear what's trapped inside. We don't want to dismiss the emotion. We don't want to minimize the emotion. We want the emotion to speak. Now, that very act of speaking it out, that in and of itself can be quite helpful, quite cathartic. But also, it's very useful for the rational part of our brain to hear from the concerns that our more emotional part of our brain may have. Now, one of the things that I'll encourage you to do is at times when you hear what is located in your more emotionally responsive side, some people say, gosh, this sounds really silly. Or other people may say, oh, I really shouldn't be feeling this. What I'd encourage you to do is don't judge what you hear that's there. Just acknowledge it. Let it come. Because whatever is located there is just what it is. So let it come. And now that we've heard what it's worried about, well, now we can use it to prepare. And we can prepare in two distinct ways. The first way we can prepare is to think, well, if that's what I'm really worried about, if that's the fear uh, that I, I'm worried will happen, then what can I do now to prevent that taking place? So as an example, if you were worried that you are going to get sick, you might think, well, what can I do to prevent or minimize the possibility of ever getting sick? And so we'll do the things that we've been told to do. We'll wash our hands thoroughly. We'll keep social distance. We will stay in self-isolation as is needed. But we also use it to prepare if the worst case scenario did happen. Now, we first of all need to check, are we talking about the worst case scenario? Or are we talking about a cataclysmic case scenario that is so 
unlikely, but our brain has created it. Let's bring it back to what is genuinely a worst case scenario and then think, so if that happened, how would I get through? How would I respond to this? And take your time to ponder that. You see, often what I find is that the anticipation of going through something is often worse than the reality of going through it. Often when we are simply dwelling or ruminating on thoughts and fears rather than planning a possible solution or strategy through it, that's what is difficult. And so now that you've been able to do that, now that you've been able to create some kind of plan, to the best of your ability, knowing that it may be horrible, but this is how I would deal with it. This is how I'd get through. Well, now we put that up on the shelf for the moment. You see, what is unhelpful as the mind takes you to the worst case scenario is that what most people don't realize is that when your mind goes to the worst case scenario and it stays there, it dwells there, it ruminates there, it marinates there, well, now your brain experiences it as if it has happened, as if you have gone through the worst case. And so you simply end up traumatizing yourself further, which is not what you wanted. It's far from what you wanted. And so in that, we need to be able to bring our brain back from the worst case scenario and reflect on, so what's the most likely case scenario here? You see, one of the other things that our brain does to keep us safe is that it likes to generalize or globalize out danger. So anytime it registers anything as being in any way dangerous, it, it creates a kind of generalized sense on that. Now, what I mean by that is you can imagine that if you were attacked or bitten by a dog when you were a child, your brain now says all dogs are dangerous. Are they? No. But your brain is saying, well, why take the risk? Just consider it all dangerous. And so at this time, what your brain can also do is generalize things out and go, it's all bad. It's all horrible. It's all disastrous. Is it? No. Does it feel that way? Yeah, it might do. So we need to bring our brain back from focusing on the worst case scenario. And we need to bring our brain back from focusing on this phrase that's contained usually with the worst case scenario. And the phrase is the what if. Yeah, but what if this happens? What if that happens? Well, that's a really good question. Let's reflect on that. Let's use the what if to prepare. But now once we've done that, let's come back from the what if to the what is. Let's focus on what's happening right now. Let's focus on what's required of me right now so that we can use that worst case. We can use the what ifs to prepare, but not now to traumatize us. And that brings me to the second point, the second P here. And that is powerless. That is that we need to make peace with where we're powerless. You see, we all like to be in control. We all like to control things so that we feel a sense of security. But let's face it, we're not going to be able to control everything. And there are certainly things that we will never be able to control. And so we need to make peace with where we are genuinely powerless. I'm a dad, and even before this COVID-19 scare came about, anytime my children went out, anytime they were going to go off to a party, they were going to go down to the shops, whatever they were going to do, my brain ran through a risk assessment to see what potential dangers they could face and how they could be kept safe. Because I wanted to do all that's within my power to keep my kids safe. But could something happen that's beyond my control? To one of my kids. It could, absolutely. But if I dwelt on that constantly, well, I'd be a puddle on the ground. So I certainly want to prepare and prevent the harm and risk to them as much as possible. But then I need to put out of bounds the areas where I know I am genuinely powerless in this area so that I don't traumatize myself further. So I do, I put those 
other places of danger out of bounds in my mind. And I know that if it was to happen, well, I will need to deal with it then, but I'm not going to stew over it now. There just is no help there. So let's make peace with where we're powerless. Because you see, the other thing that can, can happen here is we want to control the things that we just can't control. And when we do that, the only thing we end up doing is stressing ourselves out and winding ourselves up. We want to do what we can do, not what we can't. We control what we can. We don't try to control what we can't. Because when we try to control that which we cannot control, we simply wind ourselves up. And then we can end up getting stressed about being stressed, which isn't helping anybody. You see, what we need to realize here is that there is this kind of feedback loop that we can get caught in. If you are stressed or anxious, what your brain is doing at this point is releasing certain chemicals like adrenaline into your body because it believes you need that to be prepared and to be safe. But once the brain releases the adrenaline and you notice that your heart is now beating faster and your breathing is getting more shallow, well, now you interpret that and you go, oh my goodness, I'm really stressed, I'm really anxious. And you can then stress about being stressed and getting anxious about being anxious. And when you do that, your brain registers that something's wrong. And so to help you, it gives you more adrenaline and around and around you go. So when people start to notice that their heart rate is picking up or their breathing's getting shallow and they're going, oh, I hate this. Why do I have to be like this? This is horrible. The brain is going, yeah, something's really bad here. Let me help you out. Let me give you more adrenaline, which just keeps you in a stressed state, which isn't helping anybody here. And so in order to calm that down, we need to, to break this feedback loop. And so what I encourage people to do is rather than stress the stress or the adrenaline that you notice in your body, simply notice it and then speak to your body like a little child. Now, I know that's going to sound weird, but it really does help. So rather than stressing out because your heart rate is picking up, simply notice it. Wow, heart, you're, you're really kicking in quite strongly right now. Ooh. My breathing's got quite shallow. You just notice it and then you speak to it like you're soothing a little child. Hey, heart rate, it's okay. Nothing's a problem right now. I can get through this. There's nothing required of me. There's nothing scary here. So thanks, adrenal gland. I don't need the adrenaline right now. You can go back to being quiet. It's all okay. And something else that can help to counteract the stress, the tension, the adrenaline in your body is to do some deep, slow breathing. And so this is what I've known as the 5555 breathing technique. I've seen it also communicated as the 777. Uh, so take your pick. But what it means is this, and you can try it for yourself. Get yourself in a relaxed, comfortable position on a chair. And then what you're going to do is you're going to breathe in through your nose to the count of five until your lungs are full. And then you're going to hold it for the count of five. And then you're slowly going to breathe out of your mouth to the count of five. And you're going to do that five times. And what that does is relax your body so that your mind can now think clearly. And then we'll move on to helping your mind think clearly. Because, of course, if your mind doesn't start thinking clearly, your body will respond and your stress response will kick back in. But if we can help the body to be relaxed, we can then move on to help the mind be relaxed as well. So the second P there is to make peace with where you are powerless. Now, the third P is perspective. You see, there is something really powerful in the way we use our perspective. 
You see, your perspective in times like this can help you or it can hinder you. It can take something that's seemingly quite monumental that's going on around us and make it seem manageable. It's all dependent on the perspective that you place. Not trying to pretend, not trying to uh, butter yourself up, not trying to just think positively, but actually getting a better perspective, a helpful perspective, a supportive perspective. Now that we've done the preparation of what the worst case was trying to tell us, now that we are putting things out of bounds in our mind where we are genuinely powerless, now we can get a better perspective. And in fact, we've already started to do that by bringing our mind back from the worst case to the most likely case, from bringing our mind back from the what if to the what is. By bringing our mind back to, rather than running with our body's response, noticing and calming our body's response. But then we also want to see what else is going to be helpful, what, how we can find another better perspective that can calm us down. And there are many ways to do this. So here are a few. You know, one way is to ask what is going to sound like quite a strange question. And it's to ask yourself, what's good about this? Now, it's quite likely your mind is going to respond initially with nothing. But when you take time to seriously consider it, what is good about this? What, what can I be grateful for in this? Genuinely grateful for. That is not just trying to pretend. You know, I can be grateful that I have my loved ones around me or that people I care about are safe or are well. What is it that I can genuinely be grateful for? Last night, our family did a round at the dinner table of what are you looking forward to? What's going to be good about being in isolation? And that can be incredibly helpful. You see, with our mind going to the worst case scenario, to the difficult, with all the news about COVID and what it might mean, there is things in that that we do need to consider, but we just don't need it to consume us. So certainly be informed, just don't marinate in it. We want to consider these things, we just don't want them to consume us. And so that's why it's also important to warm our brains up to focusing on things that we're grateful for. And that may take some time when your brain is already warmed up to perhaps catastrophizing or to the things that it is finding difficult or scary. Warm your brain up to the things that are, are, are good for you, the things that you can be thankful for. And it might be the things that you are thankful for that are things like the people that you care about uh, contactable on, uh, on Facebook or on some form of social media or platform. It might be that there are people around you who are safe and that that's something you want to be thankful for. So it's important here also to, to maybe get a better perspective by putting this into context, by thinking things like, you know, as horrible as this is, or as much as I don't want this to be, at least I'm not having to face the wars that my parents, that my grandparents, that my great-grandparents went through. You know, it might be important, like many families are doing, to find the fun in this and think of this as an extended version of Camp Survivor in your household. Or it might be important to remember that this is not forever. This is just for now. So let's take one day at a time. What's in front of me right now, what's required of me right now, and to do that next thing. It can also help in getting a better perspective to think of the resources that you have around you if you needed them. That we still have petrol stations available, we still have groceries available, we still have a government that is working hard to keep us all safe, to using all of its power to make sure it looks after the citizens, the residents in this country. It might be that you've got the resources of a community group, the resources of technology. So use your perspective to help you 
to support you, not hinder you or overwhelm you. You get to choose where you direct your perspective. So let's make sure it's a helpful one. Now, the final P here is pray. Now, what I mean by that is, if you have a spirituality, if you have a wairua, if you have a faith, then use it. This is a key resource for you. We, we are going to control what we can control. We're going to be proactive in the ways that we can be proactive. But in the areas where we can't control, we can't do anything, well, that is what we can place in the hands of God. In all of this, we can also think about the, the things that are worrying us, that we're anxious about. And in our mind's eye, take a deep breath in, bundle up what we're anxious about, and place it in God's hands. And then let go of it and let him hold on to it. It might be that you simply need to be still and know that you are loved and accepted. It might be that you need to ask for peace and then allow it in. And so we use the resources that we have. And those are four P's in helping us to manage our anxiety. And this is just one tool that I hope will be of use to you in some way. Kia kaha. Stay strong, my friends. We will get through this.